Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. A clutter coach and professional organizer, Julie also offers tips to help you get clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Today's show is sponsored by Rapid Gift Bag, the world's greatest gift bag organizer. Wrapping paper, gift boxes and bags, tissue paper, scissors, tape and cards, they all just slip right in. For more information, please visit rapidgiftbag.com. Hey everyone, it's hard to believe that the 2014 holidays are upon us. For the first time this year, I saw Halloween decorations in August and Christmas decorations in September and thought I was going to lose my mind. The holidays are a time when we can get not only physical clutter in our life, but also mental, emotional, and spiritual clutter. So today we're going to give you tips for clutter-free holidays and how to organize your holidays. Geraldine Thomas is a certified professional organizer, chronic disorganization, and a level 5 master trainer, but her true superpowers are her warmth and humor, which are useful when working with clients and coaching new organizers. A Tar Heel fan and graduate from UNC Chapel Hill, Geraldine makes her home in Cary, North Carolina. She's a past president of the North Carolina chapter of the National Association of Professional Organizers. You may have seen her published in an array of national magazines or featured on A&E's Hoarders. The Nate Perkis Show, Today, or South Africa's The Home Channel. Welcome, Gerilyn. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everybody. Happy holidays. We are thrilled to have you back because we always learn so much. So let's get started. Lots of good stuff to talk about today. Yes, absolutely. What seems to create the most clutter, physical, mental, whatever you want to touch on, for the holidays? Well, there's kind of a combination. In my opinion, it's a little bit, uh, no, it's a lot of calendar clutter. And by that, I mean, you know, you try to attend three parties in one night or you book yourself solid and then you start feeling really lousy by the time, you know, Saturday night rolls around and that's really the party that you were hoping to attend. So um, my advice is kind of scale back on what you're adding to your to-do list as far as traveling to and from places in traffic or weather or sick kids if you're a parent and have to stay home and, you know, take that into account or just making yourself run, feel run down. Then the calendar uh, pressure comes also from parents who feel that they have to, you know, bake three kinds of cookies and decorate like, you know, there's nobody's business and you need the outside lights, the inside lights. You know, I, I really feel like we've just gotten so carried away and kind of crazy with all the holiday stuff. It's, I know for me, for several years, it took the fun out of the holidays. Um, it used to be in the good old days, you would send cards to people like you didn't see or talk to very much. But now it's like the list keeps growing and, you know, at 40 whatever cents postage, it, I mean, it's an expensive thing and it's just time consuming. And why are you sending, you know, a card to somebody you see all the time and live right across town? Uh, I'm with you 110%. I, for years, did not send out holidays cards for a multitude of reasons, except for elderly relatives, where I felt that, you know what, there's someone that's going to bring them a lot of joy to get the card, whereas most of people, they end up in the recycle bin within right. five seconds of reading it. Right. I agree. Now, where else would you say that people tend to get overwhelmed? We talked about clutter, but maybe another area where they get overwhelmed during the holidays beside the calendar. Well, what, what, what direction do you want to go? Where are you thinking, Julie? This is your show, Geraldine, and it's whatever you feel moved to discuss because I trust that everything unfolds as it's supposed to. Yeah. Well, okay, so, you know, just the, just the little things that we've almost started um, mandating from each other. Now, I'm going to excuse myself from this conversation because I used to be one of those people, but for at least 12, maybe 15 years now, I'm not doing it. I'm not gifting neighbors. I'm not gifting, you know, everybody that's in my life. I just, I really think it's become, you know, um, well, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little shift in the conversation. So one of the things that occurred to me when my kids, my boys were in um, like elementary and middle school, is I'd volunteer at the school and I'd see these teachers' desks filled with stuff. 
And I, you know, used to, I couldn't help myself, I would ask a lot of nosy questions like, I see you have about 40 bottles of hand lotion and maybe 30 picture frames and 10 scented candles. And, and every teacher I ever asked said, yeah, it's, you know, it's like this every year. And, I'm, and I wanted to know, what do you really do with that stuff? Well, guess what? They don't want it. They don't love it. They don't need it. So they try to give it away or they try to re-gift it. But the truth of the matter is, Julie, this, these really generic gifts that there is no one-size-fits-all gift. So we don't need more candles and hand lotion and yucky bath salts that maybe somebody never wanted in the first place. So I, I hate to be harsh. It sounds like I'm kind of like a curmudgeon, like a bah humbug. And that's not what I mean. But why not? pocket that money and if you really want to do something good either give the teacher a gift certificate to like dinner or Amazon she can buy or he can buy whatever he pleases and it's just so much more lean and clean but for some reason our society thinks that feels cheap or wrong to give somebody oh I only want to spend you know seven like if you go around and look at the the price of these gifts they're giving you know a lot of them not all, but a lot of them are bought very inexpensive and that they, they want to give something. So, you know, if, if your goal is to buy a $10 or under gift, just do a $10 Amazon gift card and let that person stack them up and buy what they want. So I, I don't know. That's, that's probably one of the biggest things around the holidays. And then the, you got to keep a closet full of gifts for anybody that comes over and gifts you. No, you don't. I want to give you permission. No, don't. Don't buy 10 bottles of wine that because they're affordable to give away and all those other things we just went through. It's not necessary. I'm with you. One thing that we did in my family, I have two brothers and a cousin who's like a brother. And I mean, I remember I was living out in Los Angeles, had first moved there, wasn't making any money, and we brought gifts for everyone in the family and and I don't have a huge family and finally I said to my brother my brothers are like oh thank God we love yeah. you but we don't want to give gifts and so I said alright but we don't want to gifts for everyone in the ha family so my younger brother who's the funny one we said alright you have a conversation with dad and so oh. my dad's like absolutely support it he said but let me talk to my sisters and so what they said and what we've decided in our family the generation above gives to the generation below and so I get my nieces and nephew and cousins child gifts because you know they're young kids they are really gonna have fun but it saved us money it saved us time and, it, and I'm with you I'm like I don't want a gift that you got on sale at a Kohl's 20% off that's five dollars I'd rather have nothing right right because then I have to then I'm like sort of burdened bringing it home and doing something with it and chances are I'm not gonna light that candle in my house so off it goes you know what are some tips that you have for organizing around the holidays? Well, I think do it if, if you are a person that wants to decorate, like, you know, first of all, I deal with a lot of people. Many, many, many of my clients have more than one tree in their house. So when I start drilling down on this tradition, um, I, I actually have uh, probably half a, dozen, half a dozen clients that put trees in each child's room. So to me, that's extreme, and it's a lot of extra work. And, you know, here's the thing. If you enjoy that, if it is pleasurable for you to bring in all these trees and haul down the decorations or put that in your kid's room, that's great because you enjoy it. But I hear a lot of women in particular saying it's not fun. It's like they dread it, and they're the ones schlepping the stuff you know, from the garage or the attic or whatever. So my advice is just scale back. Just start somewhere by saying out loud to everybody. And, and the other thing is some families it's going to cause a little ruckus. You know, it's not going to go over real smoothly. And other families will kind of have your family's reaction like, oh, thank goodness, and here's what we want to do. This is what's important to us. So that's, that's the first thing. And then I've always been a big believer in a cookie swap it's fun it's social um, you know invite people that you know their kitchens are clean would be my first real organizing tip like you don't want somebody at your cookie swap that you've been in their kitchen and think I'd never eat a thing in here well keep that in mind who you invite but for the most part a cookie swap is a you know I'm, I'm scarred by some of you know some of my past business experience um, but for the most part cookie exchanges are fun and we did one for years and years um, all the men had to bring an appetizer that they made, and all the women had to bake cookies. Or if, if you had a, a 
partnership where you could flip those roles. That's cool too. We didn't really care. But it was really kind of comical because um, most of the guys in our group could not cook a thing and it they had to get really creative. So like one year I think we had like six cheese balls and they were all really bad, but it just made the party even more fun. You know, we ended up ordering I think Chinese takeout or something, but I digress. Anyway, we all ended up with a variety of cookies. They were all delicious. We had fun. We had drinks that night, you know, out smoking cigars on the patio with a fire. It's It was just a really fun idea and a nice way to socialize without spending, you know, three weeks in the kitchen because that's not my idea of fun. And I know it is fun for some people to do that. And that created great memories from you. And that really is what the holidays are about. No matter if you're religious or spiritual, yeah. it's about being with family and friends and creating creating right. memories. Right. And we have um, a friend that does that like with chili. They don't they don't celebrate the ho uh, you know Christmas. So instead of Christmas cookies, they have a chili cook off and everybody has to bring a batch of chili and then they vote. Yeah, it's really it's really fun. So get creative. You know, if you have wine and you each bring your favorite wine and taste it or, you know, it, the sky's the limit on what you can do with that. Now, are there any other challenges in clutter or getting organized that you have found are specific for the holidays? So most of it is um, revolved around shopping and card addressing and attending events and then really one of the one of my most popular things that I do for folks is send them a reminder way early like I, like thank, um, not Thanksgiving Halloween is to book your babysitter now and I have a list of babysitter interview questions you know just little things so that if you have a New Year's plan and it's October three cheers for you but don't forget to book your sitter you know that that's a really big part of it and if if you want to have a few drinks and stay out later than midnight which most people do um, make sure your sitter is okay with that or maybe she's going to spend the night just kind of start thinking about what what needs to be done that's an excellent tip we are going to West Virginia for Christmas this year and the cat sitter has been booked for a month yeah. because that I'm I'm kind of an uptight cat mother and so I want someone who is gonna come and stay with him I have all the directions planned out and he's very particular so that was the first thing I said I said before we book anything we're getting the cat sitter yeah, or house sitter. Yeah, absolutely. So think about what needs tending. If you have an aquarium or a turtle or a dog, cat, children, whatever, provide for it. And, you know, it. the earlier you start thing, I always call it like the countdown, the more relaxed you'll be able to enjoy. If, if you know that you're going to some, uh, you know, really kind of fancy party on New Year's Eve and you know you need a dress, don't wait until December 1st to go shopping for your dresses because they're picked over. So go now while the sizes are plentiful and, and do your best to find something that you think you're going to feel great and confident in. Wonderful. Now what advice would you have to someone who's maybe like they listen to this but then they forgot everything, it's in the middle of the holidays, they're completely overwhelmed and frazzled. What would you say to them? Uh, uh, well, I guess you know, my advice is the world's going to keep spinning even if you forget to do something or if you um, have this last minute notion like, holy cow, this whole thing I planned came unraveled. So, you know, I have my own horror holiday stories about, you know, I'm not the world's greatest cook and I dropped stuff on the floor or burned something or couldn't get ingredients. So you just have to go with the flow and remember that most likely the people that you're inviting to celebrate whatever it is you're celebrating, they really don't care. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fine. And um, one of my most successful uh, family get-togethers was when I like dropped a whole casserole of something all over my kitchen floor. The dog was eating it. The dog got sick. Everybody's there watching this. But um, my my in-laws and family came to the rescue, and they just said, "Everybody in the kitchen, and we're going to go in her pantry, see what she's got, and bail her out." So it was fun. It was fine. You know, we pulled together. Yeah. No, I love that. I did Thanksgiving dinner for the first time last year, and. Only had a couple of glitches, but again, I'm like, you know what? This is what we have. It's all good. Thankfully, I'm married to a very laid-back man, and his friend was over, and it was all good. Right. So, do you have any tips for families that are mixed, uh, have mixed religions, or any advice for holiday families, just family-oriented? Yeah. Um, so, I think it's important to kind of test the waters 
before the holidays arrive. So some families do a summer reunion, you know, at the beach, the beach, everybody gets together and spends some time. So I think that is probably a more appropriate time to sound off ideas or, um, so if, I'm thinking of somebody I work with right now, and one of the families does not allow, their religion allows no alcohol at all, and the other family is like, you know, rock and Irish Catholic, like, well, the more the, ha the, be the, more the merrier. So um, the summer is probably, or the fall is probably the best time to say, you know, how do you want to handle this? Um, our family enjoys cocktails with dinner or cocktails before dinner or wine with dinner, and we know that's offensive to you. So... Um, if we, you know, make it through the night and then decide at 8 o'clock coffee and dessert and after that we're going to, you know, so find what works or even little things like some cultures allow, you know, no shoes in the house. If you know that ahead of time when you arrive, it won't make anybody uncomfortable. You are expected to remove your shoes at the door and have, you know, clean socks or, um, um, I'm going through like my Rolodex of all my client situations. Um, another culture does not allow any bare arms. So if you're arriving at this party and you're dressed up and you feel like a million bucks in your brand new little black dress, but it's sleeveless, that might be a huge offensive thing to do to your in-laws, future in-laws, friends. So you just want to kind of run it by and ask right out in the open, you know, are our shoes being worn? Is alcohol being served? Is that okay? Um, just a lot of little things like that. Or another thing I always think is important is um, if families get together and let's say there's the person in her 50s or 60s who's raised her family if you do not want other people disciplining your children, there there has to be a good way to let the world know that. Um, and I also think it's good to kind of uh, keep yourself in check because what was okay for your kids or the rules aren't necessarily the way other people are, you know, raising their children. So, and it gets Julie like crazy sticky when it's overnight house guests, right? Okay, little Bobby, you're not allowed in their bedroom. And there he goes, jumping on their bed at, you know, 7.30 in the morning. And these people are, sing not singles, but, you know, no children and sleep till 9. So, <laughs> Excellent. Those are great tips. Now, do you recommend getting organized or letting go of some more clutter before or after the holidays? Oh, absolutely before. It is the time to do it. So, you know, I always think once that flood of Halloween candy comes in and every parent I know is like dipping into their kid's secret stash while they're at school, um, that's the time to go around and not only loot your children's candy, but go through their drawers and closets and cabinets and donate, donate, donate as much as you can. Um, and a lot of people always ask me, do you think the children should be present when we're doing this? And this is a very unpopular answer, but no, I do not think so. I think up, into a, up to about nine, I don't know that kids really have it in them to make those decisions. Even when you do the Good Samaritan thing, like we're going to drop this off to children that are less fortunate, cognitively, I just don't know if the share thing is there that early. But after that, I think most kids are pretty good about saying, mm, I don't, I love that so much. When's the last time you played with it? Oh, mm, you're right. And, you know, you're getting to be a bigger kid now. You want different kinds of stuff. So, yeah, so definitely weed out the toys before every relative and their brother shows up bringing more stuff to them. Excellent. Any final thoughts on holiday organizing or clearing clutter for the holidays? Go through your gift wraps, go through your candles, um, make a little countdown list. I know for Thanksgiving it's a really overwhelming holiday for a lot of people. So always offer, you know, what what can I bring? I really want to bring something. Is it, do you need a green vegetable? Do you need a dessert? Do you need fresh flowers? I can send them there or I can bring them. So, yeah, there's lots of little things that, you know, you can offer to help with. Fantastic. Now, one final tip for organizing clutter in any area, any subject of their life. Hmm. Any subject of your life is, I'd say make a priority list. What's important to you at this moment in your life? Because I really think organ um, organizing is a very organic process. And I really see, even in my own life, how what's so important, you know, for five years suddenly shifts at, with my own life changes, with my kids growing up, with my parents.
parents getting elderly. So there's lots of little things and don't think once you're organized, you're organized for life. It's kind of one of those maintenance things. Excellent. Now tell people how they can find out more information or any good things that you're doing you'd like to share. Okay. Um, you can find out more about my business at metropolitanorganizing.com. And um, I have some products if you need housekeeping help or if you want to um, kind of shape up your wardrobe or if you want to become a professional organizer. I have lots of products for people who want to pursue that uh, field. Outstanding. And I want to thank again Gerilyn Thomas of Metropolitan Organizing and wish everyone happy holidays for 2014. And remember, go out some, and clear some clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Again, thanks to our sponsor, Wrap It Gift Bag. You can find out more about this great wrapping paper and more organizer at wrapitgiftbag.com. Thanks for joining us on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. You can find out more about Julie Caraccio and her services at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. We'll see you here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.